All right, welcome to the channel for the first time viewers. Welcome back for my existing subscribers. Today we're going to go over my um, X670E BIOS. I uh, did the Z790 and uh, got a couple of requests for the next version. So we're going to try to give it a go here. I just restarted the computer. Just waiting for it to pop up and we'll run through my settings. Also got a new gimbal, the DJI um, Osmos Mobile 6. Shout out to Stucky Man. Dude came in Klizach. So Stucky Man helped uh, get this video going. All right, let's go ahead. And uh, this is obviously easy mode. I don't have any AI system tuning, which you can see over here to the right a little bit. So if you look over here to the top right, uh, it'll just show you if you have you know easy system tuning. So F7. We'll get you into your advanced, which is some of my favorite options here. So my RAM is running at 6200. Um, this is fairly stable now, uh, but 6200 and the FCLK is running at 2100. So uh, core performance boost, I have it on auto. GPU boost, I have it on auto. And for DRAM timing control, and I don't have the most optimized Ryzen system. So it's just kind of wild west out here. So here are some of my timings. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. See if you can get in. Uh, let's see. There we go. So, all right. So my TCL, which is like your your cast latency, it's 26, 36, 36, 48. And the next big one is the TRFC, which is 480. So I'm going to zoom out so you can see all the different numbers real quick. See if I can get that in there. There we go. All right. So I'll just run through this for those of you that care, or if you're looking for some. Some of these times I got from um, Matt B, and some of them I got from the Asus board, which is actually pretty cool. So if you got an Asus board, you can go to memory presets. And if you know what kind of memory your sticks use, it actually shows you some options here. So you have, let's say, for instance, you have your Hynix A die. So you, if you know you have Hynix, you know, and it's highly rated, you could try out some of these settings. So it's like, you know, 1.4 volts, the 2 by 16, a single rank. That's what SR versus DR means. Uh, or if you have, you know, 2 by 32 gig sticks, you could try to see if that's uh, if that'll work for you better. So these are just some of the um, the RAM times you could start off with and then you could try to tighten them down. What it does is when you activate one of those, it automatically goes through and changes your VD, VDDP. All right, let me zoom out so you can see. So it automatically changes your VDDP. And I'm using 1.49 volts to get the uh, CL26 going. I'm going to try to see if I can lower this down to either 1.47 or 1.48. That's where I'm most comfortable is like anywhere from 1.47 down. Um, but you know, we'll have to keep what we can keep. If I go up to C28, then I can run this at about 1.45. So, um, I just wanted to pass, um, which we'll call it mem test and go from there. So before we leave this main page, we'll look at the PBO. So PBO is precision boost overdrive right here at the top. And from there, I just have the medium boost, um, boost it. Now, this feature is what lets you boost past your, let's say you have, I don't know, what's a good, what's a good example? 5.5, um, right? So 5.5 gigahertz is the cap um, for the Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 9 7950X. Obviously, the X3D has two caps. It's like 5.7 gigahertz on the, um, what is it? on the uh, non VCAS CCD, and then it is 5.2, I think 5.2 or 5.25 on the VCAS CCD. So turning this on will increase the limit because let's say you have just the non-X3D, three non -X3D, this piece will go ahead and it will lock over to um, 5.5 gigahertz. So you won't be able to, be able to boost past that. Then you have your CPU boost clock override, and this is gonna be the maximum boost. And then you can add up to 200 megahertz here. So that's what this 200 means. Um, you could just play around with that and see what's most stable for your system. And then the curve optimizer, because I'm a little bit on the, uh, 
get me out of the bio so I can play my games. I just know that everything is stable at um, all cores. So you have a couple options here. It's all core and per core. Per core is really if you're if you're an expert, you want to spend a lot of time doing stability testing, then you would do per core. And uh, let me show you what that looks like. So you see each one of your cores and you can do either a positive uh, and this is really like voltage, right? So you can do a positive uh, magnitude or you can do a negative, right? So negative and like, let's say this is your best core and you can do negative 31, right? On your, on your, on your specific core. If you did it across the entire chip, then on both CCDs, it would just crash. So you do all cores. I did negative 10 just because again, I know that even the non CC, the non VCAS CCD that was stable at negative 10. So, all right, last couple things. Since I have an ASUS board, I just wanted to show you this last piece here. If you have an ASUS board, you come down to your tool and then you go to your armory crate and make sure that this is set to disabled so it doesn't install any, any crap on your on your OS, right? So this is the armory crate that from the BIOS level, it will try to install on the back end for you. I mean, I don't use it at all whatsoever. So that's just one, that's the very first thing that I, um, that I disable. The last uh, piece before I go ahead and finish up the video is just the same thing that I do for, for um, the tuning before um, on the Intel build. So I had my stock X3D. Oh, let me show you all that. I'm going to show you one more thing actually. Um, you have your stock X3D. So it's just regular bare bones stock in case something messes up and I want to test stability. I can go back to profile one and then I have X3D profile, um, which the reason says X3D is not because of the chip. It's actually because of a feature that I have turned on. Um, and then the Ram tuning. So 6,200, I was testing that out and 6,400, which wasn't stable. So I was testing out those different, um, those different timings. I ended up settling on 6,200, um, C26. That piece that I was telling you about, sit back. I'm going at a pretty healthy pace. So if you have questions, throw it in the uh, comment section. Uh, the Core Flex, I don't know where you can find it on like MSI boards. I haven't had an AMD MSI board on this generation, but the X3D chips have this particular preset that's in there. So it's the Load X3D Core Flex Gaming Preset. So when you click on this, it just loads up this gaming preset that tells from the BIOS level um, the the programs and the games to prefer the Vcash CCD. So this is all automatically preloaded. I did not set any of this. It's just once you click on here, it automatically throws it on. So this is a, a tough X670E. It should be fairly similar across the board, but if you um, these are the main main things to consider, right? So. Hopefully this helps some of y'all out that wanted to know what my bio settings look like. And yeah, I'm not an extreme overclocker type of guy. I just kind of throw in a couple things, play around a little bit and leave it at that. So I'll catch y'all on the flip. Be easy.